to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin this is the gospel of christ to proclaim the news unto the poor the gospel of christ spreading the soul-saving message of jesus and now ben bailey this is the gospel of christ king belshazzar is told by god you've been weighed in the balances and found wanting daniel chapter 5 verse number 27 what is going on in daniel chapter 5 that would make god say that to a king we're so glad that you've joined us for our study of the Word of God today as we're going to look at a deadly night feast in Daniel chapter 5. We hope that you'll take a moment to get your Bible, have it open to Daniel chapter 5 with us as we're going to study this section of Scripture together. Friend, we're bringing this lesson to you from members of the Church of Christ who are concerned about men and women across the globe hearing the message of God and being encouraged by the Scriptures. Those Christians in your area would love for you to visit with them. Uh, the Church of Christ would love for you to come to their worship or their Bible study. If you know members of the Lord's Church, they'd be glad to talk to you about the Bible. And friend, at this evangelistic work, the Gospel of Christ, we'd also like to encourage you in your study of the Scripture. Please check out our website. The address is thegospelofchrist.com. We've got a host, a large variety of good Bible study material from our website. You can access written material as well as audio and videos of all of our lessons and many past lessons that we have online. We want to encourage you to download our app on your phone, whether for Android or iPhone. You can download it from the App Store, the Play Store. Please do that. As well as if you'd like to have a copy of today's lesson, you can request those from our website or by calling us or mailing to us or sending us a letter at the end of this broadcast. The information can be given. Now let's direct our attention to what's going on in Daniel chapter 5. Backing up just a minute, in Daniel chapter 4, King Nebuchadnezzar had to learn a hard lesson. The kingdom of God, God rules in the kingdoms of men and gives it to whomever He pleases. Daniel chapter 4, verse 25. Nebuchadnezzar also learned that Daniel's God is the true and living God and that God must be revered and respected or there will be consequences to that. Now it's a shame that what Nebuchadnezzar learned, he never taught this lesson to his son. It could have saved him from a deadly night feast in Daniel chapter 5, verses 1 through 31. And so Belshazzar in Daniel 5 is having this big party. Everybody's there. Everybody's partying. It's a great scene. And then the hand begins to write on the wall. Mene, mene, tiko, you've arson. You've been weighed in the balances and found wanting. And as a result, God brings judgment upon Belshazzar for his life and the things that he's done that are not according to the Scripture. Now, from this deadly night scene in Daniel chapter 5, we want to ask, what lessons can we learn from the foolishness and the folly of Belshazzar? What practical truths can be applied from this Old Testament text that are practical for the Christian age and what will this do? What can these lessons do to help us be more faithful to Almighty God? Friend, here's one of the first and so practical of a lesson today for the child of God. Men must never, men and women, people must never underestimate the foolishness and the folly of sin and alcohol. Look in Numbers, or excuse me, Daniel chapter 5, verse number 1. I want you to notice the folly of this. Belshazzar, the king, made a great feast for a thousand of his lords and drank wine in the presence of of the thousand. Now Belshazzar is going to come under the influence and here you've got all these lords, all this great feast, all the, 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 the pomp and the prestige that goes with that and everybody's drinking in this big party. And bad things are going to happen to Belshazzar and a lot of people because of that. 
Friend, we mention this because it's such a relevant and practical point today. The Bible warns over and over again of the folly of letting oneself come under the influence of alcohol. Do you remember Proverbs 20 verse 1? Wine, what is it? It's a mocker. Strong drink, what is it? It's a brawler. What about the person who gives into it? He's not wise. That's what the Bible says. Ephesians 5.18 says, Do not be drunken with wine, wherein is dissipation. Now, I want to illustrate this from a couple of people in the Bible who really exhibit some things, who show us some things that happened to them that were it not for being under the influence, probably wouldn't have happened. Genesis chapter 9, uh, we learn that Noah had some things done to him sexually that wouldn't have been done had he not been drunk on wine. Molestation, things like under that, Noah got drunk and he was taken advantage of. Genesis 19, Lot's two daughters want to have children. Uh, they don't have husbands, so they make the plan, let's have our father impregnate us. They know he wouldn't do that in his right mind, so they get him drunk. And as a result, again, bad things happen because of that. When you read the Bible, over and over again we're taught, Wine is a mocker, it's a, a brawler. It, you're not going to be wise if you use that. The Christian is warned to stay away from the influence of alcohol and the majority of what you read it in Scripture is negative and is not going to help the child of God. Now, let's learn another lesson from Daniel chapter 5 that is very powerful today and that is don't be disrespectful or irreverent toward God and holy things. Look in Daniel chapter 5, verses 2 and 3. Notice what the scripture records here. While Belshazzar tasted the wine, Belshazzar gave the command to bring the gold and silver vessels which his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken from the temple which had been in Jerusalem, and the king and his lords, his wives, and his concubines might drink from them. Then they brought the gold vessels that had been taken from the temple of the house of God, which had been in Jerusalem, and the king and his lords and his wives and his concubines drank from them. And so here you've got Belshazzar. He feels like he's the most powerful force in the world. He feels like he's on top of the world and nobody can bring him down. Let's bring the cups of the nation who thought they were the nation of the living God. And let's take those gold and silver cups and let's fill them to the brim with alcohol. And let's, in, uh, in showing and disrespect for them and their God, let's drink out of those cups. Well, they did that. And there's no doubt that they thought they were doing the right thing and thought they were being very powerful. But you know, it was great disrespect for God and for holy things. And friend, when you read about what's going to happen in Daniel chapter 5, their day of reckoning is going to come. Why? Because they were disrespectful to God, to holy things, and to His Word. Proverbs 28 verse 14 tells us that we've got to be careful not to disrespect God. We want to respect His Word and listen to what God has to say. We need the attitude of Moses in Exodus 3, who when he's presented by God, he takes the sandals off his feet because he's not even worthy to be there. I want God to know by my life, we want God to know by our life that we honor Him, that we respect Him. We don't want to make light of God or the church, or holy things, or worshiping God. You know, if we're not careful, we can be irreverent toward God today by our actions and by our attitude and by the way we relate to other people. Belshazzar ends up regretting his, decision, his decisions later, and let's make sure that we live a life that brings honor and glory to God and shows Him the respect He is worthy. All right, now let's look in Daniel chapter 5, and I want you to notice in verse 4, another lesson that we learn from this text is that paganism and idolatry and worshiping false gods is so futile. Look in Daniel chapter 5, verse number 4. It says, They drank wine and praised the gods of gold and silver and bronze and iron and wood and stone. Here they're not only making fun of God, they're praising all these false gods that they've made with their own hands. Now you're going to notice in just a little bit that their idolatry and paganism doesn't profit them when it comes time of reckoning with God. But friend, in our world today, there's a lot of people who worship other gods. 
whether it be Hinduism, whether it be Buddhism, whether it be uh, other religions of the world, they'll, the idea, they'll make a god with their hand. They'll take metal, they'll take wood, they'll take iron, and they'll fashion something, and then they'll say, here, you're my god. Well, the creature is worshiping uh, the Creator. Is, we're not worshiping the Creator. We're worshiping our own creation more than we do God, who is really the one who's worthy to be worshiped forever, Romans chapter 1 says. And so just like in Acts 17, when Paul went into Mar Athens there on Mars Hill, he saw all those gods and he was moved to proclaim the true and the living God. We need as well to avoid idolatry and paganism at all costs. It cannot save one in the last day. Now, I want us to learn then another very powerful lesson from Daniel chapter 5, and it's this. Don't overlook the writing on the wall. Look in Daniel chapter 5, verse number 5. In that same hour, that same hour they've got the cups of God and they're drinking and getting drunk, in the same hour they're praising these idols, in the same hour the fingers of a man's hand appeared and wrote opposite the lampstand on the plaster of the wall of the king's palace, and the king saw the part of the hand that wrote. You know, there's a lot that really stands out in this passage, and ultimately, the message is about honoring God. But the problem is, Belshazzar is going to overlook all that. Friend, don't overlook the writing on the wall. Don't overlook what's evident, what's plain, what is right before one's face, the Word of God. Don't overlook what, what we can clearly see in everyday life, that there is a God. Let's not overlook God's writing that He's given us today in the Bible. Where do we find the, the hand of God writing and the message of God today? Well, friend, we, found that, we find that written in the Bible. Jeremiah 37, 17. A question is asked, is there any word from the Lord? And friend, the answer is a resounding yes. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 14, verse 34 through 37, If any man thinks himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge the things that I write to you. These are the commandments of God. This is God's message. This is God's plan. This is the voice of God, the message of God for us today. And let's definitely not overlook that. And then as we think about practical lessons from Daniel chapter 5, let's also realize this. I need to have a healthy fear and respect for God before it's too late. Look in your Bible in Daniel chapter 5, and I want you to notice what the Scripture says directly after the writing on the wall. In verse number 6, the Bible says, Then the king's countenance changed, and his thoughts troubled him. Now you watch this, so that the joints of his hips were loosened and his knees knocked against each other. You ever heard the old story of somebody's knees knocking? You know, you hear, boy, he's so scared his knees were knocking. That's kind of the idea of what's going on here. Why, the king sees that hand out of nowhere writing on the wall, and at this point he's finally ready to respect or hear uh, the message. But it's nearly too late. This man has lived his life in such immorality. He's mocked and made fun of God. He's worshipped idols. Friend, I want to have a healthy fear for God before it's too late. The Bible says in Hebrews 10 verse 31, It's a fearful thing to fall in the hands of the living God. For our God is a living fire, a flaming fire, before it's too late, before that final day. You know, a person can live his life and make changes at any time. But you get to a point where it's so hard to change. If one has lived their life so brazen and so hard-hearted that it's almost very difficult for that person to change. Don't live your life without fear and respect for Almighty God. We want to have a godly fear. Hebrews chapter 12, verse number 17, or Hebrews 11, 7, and Hebrews chapter 12, verse number 28. Now, another powerful lesson from Daniel chapter 5 is... Don't look to the wrong source for the answers to really important questions. Look in Daniel chapter 5, and I want you to notice what happens now from Belshazzar after he sees this writing on the wall and his hips are loose and his knees are knocking. What's he do? Look in Daniel chapter 5, beginning in verse number 7. The Bible says, The king cried aloud, 
to bring in the astrologers, the Chaldeans, and the soothsayers. The king spoke, saying to the wise men of Babylon, Whoever reads this writing and tells me its interpretation shall be clothed with purple, have a chain of gold around his neck, and he shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. Now there's a lot to be made off of telling Belshazzar what's going on here, but here's the major problem. Belshazzar, he looked to the wrong source for the answer. Friend, life has so many questions that are so extremely important. Don't look to the wrong source. Let me identify a few of those wrong sources. One of them, Belshazzar looked to. Don't look to men. Don't look to other people and don't look to men as your final source and authority for the important question spiritually. The Bible says this, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. Acknowledge Him in all your ways. He'll direct your paths. Proverbs 3, verses 5 through 7. Don't look to the books and writings of men for the really important questions of life. Psalm 119, 160 says, The entirety of God's Word is truth. I, I, when I want to know, how do I get to heaven? What am I going to do to be saved? How does God want me to live my life? Why am I here? What's my purpose? Friend, I want to look to the Bible. Men cannot adequately answer that question because it's God who created us, not men. Don't look to what's popular for the answers today. Exodus 23 verse 2 warns us, Do not follow a multitude to do evil. There is a wide path, there's a, a, a broad path and a wide way that most are going down, Jesus said, that leads to eternal destruction. Friend, don't look to the popular, what's popular for that today. And then, friend, we make the warning from Scripture. Don't look to religious leaders of men for the answer today. Some in Jesus' day were doing that. And Jesus sharply rebuked them. Matthew 23, verse 9, they were blind leaders of the blind. Uh, Jesus said they, they reject the will of God so that they could keep their tradition and their commandments. Instead of looking at all these sources, we need the encouragement of Paul. In Romans 4, verse 3, is there any word from the Lord or what does the Scripture say? And then we need this as well. To understand and to make practical application from Daniel chapter 5, we need to realize we've got to learn from the past and look to God for the answers. Look in Daniel chapter 5, watch what is said in verses 10 through 12. The queen, because of the words of the king and his lords, came to the banquet hall. The queen spoke, saying, O king, live forever. Do not let your thoughts trouble you, nor let your continents change. There is a man in your kingdom in whom is the Spirit of the Holy God. And in the days of your father, light and understanding and wisdom like the wisdom of the gods were found in him. And King Nebuchadnezzar, your father, your father the king, made him chief of the magicians, astrologers, Chaldeans, and soothsayers, inasmuch as an excellent spirit is in him an excellent spirit, knowledge, understanding, interpreting dreams, solving riddles, and explaining enigmas were found in this Daniel, whom the king named Belshazzar. Now let Daniel be called, and he'll give you the interpretation. You know, one of the things Belshazzar had to learn here is, Learn from the past and look to God. There's already an answer. There's a man who can answer it. He's already proven. He's the prophet of the true God. He proved it to your father. Bring him up. Let him give the answer on these things. And so Daniel is called up. Daniel comes before the king. His character is unimpeachable. He's a good man of God and he's doing what's right because it's the right thing to do in following God. But Belshazzar is a very prideful man and he doesn't want to hear the message of God. He wants to do it his own way. I want you to notice another important lesson we learn is don't let pride get in the way. Look at Daniel chapter 5 and I want you to notice how the text reads in verses 17 through 23. Then Dan Daniel is called, and Daniel answered and said before the king, Let your gifts be for yourself. 
Give your rewards to another. Yet I will read the writing to the king and make known to him the interpretation. O king, the most high God gave Nebuchadnezzar your father a kingdom and majesty and glory and honor. And because of the majesty he gave him, all peoples, nations, and languages trembled and feared before him. Whomever he wished, he executed. Whomever he wished, he kept alive. Whomever he wished, he set up. Whomever he wished, he put down. But when his heart was lifted up and his spirit was hardened in pride, he was deposed from his kingly throne and they took his glory from him. Then he was driven from the sons of men. His heart was made like the wild beast. His dwelling was with the wild donkeys. They fed him with grass like oxen. His body was wet with the dew of heaven until he knew. The Most High God rules in the kingdoms of men and appoints it to whomever He chooses. But you, His son, Belshazzar, have not humbled your heart. Although you knew all this, you have lifted yourself up against the Lord of heaven. They've brought the vessels of God's house before you. You and your lords and your wives and your concubines have drunken wine from them. And you have praised the gods of silver and of gold and bronze and iron and wood and stone, which do not see or hear or know. And the God who holds your breath in His hand and owns all your ways, you've not glorified. Daniel speaks very candidly to King Belshazzar. Your heart's prideful. You knew all this. You had heard the stories. You knew what had happened. You knew where your father's power came from, and yet you still mock the true and living God, and you didn't give honor and glory to Almighty God. Friend, don't let pride and don't let things of this world get in the way of putting God and heaven first. There's a way that seems right to a man, but the end thereof is the way of death. Proverbs 16, verse 25. And Proverbs 16, verse 18 says, Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Now let's turn our attention to what Daniel says to this king that is so striking and so important. Daniel chapter 5, verse number 25. Then the fingers of the hand were sent from heaven, and this writing was written. And this is the inscription that was written. Mene, mene, tiku eupharsin. This is the interpretation of each word. Mene, God has numbered your kingdom and finished it. Tekel, you've been weighed in the balances and found wanting. Perez, your kingdom has been delivered and given to the Medes and Persians. Then Belshazzar gave the command, and they clothed Daniel with purple, put a chain of gold around his neck, and made a proclamation concerning him that he should be the third ruler in the kingdom. Listen to verse 30. That very night, Belshazzar, king of the Chaldeans, was slain, and Darius the Mede received the kingdom, being about 62 years old. When you think about what's going on in Daniel 5, under the influence, absolute disrespect for God, hearts full of pride, even though they should have known all that, God still had a message for those people. And friend, God has a message for people today whose hearts have not been humbled at His throne. God said to Belshazzar with the writing on the wall, Mene, Mene. What did the word mene mean? God has numbered your kingdom and finished it. Friend, we're not kings living in a kingdom, but I can assure you of this. Every one of our days on this earth are numbered, and each one of us will one day stand before Almighty God. Seventy, maybe eighty years if we're lucky. What is your life? It's but a vapor. Here for a little while, then it vanishes away. Man who's born of woman, few days full of trouble. Job 14, verse 1. Don't think to yourself you're going to live forever. You can outlive and out, you can laugh at God and you can mock at God and holy things. Just like Belshazzar, his time was up. One day, all of our times will be up and we will have to stand before God and give an account. And then the word tekel. That word meant you've been weighed in the balances and found wanting. What does that mean? Not only is my time limited, but friend, one day there will be a day of weighing for all people. There will be a day of judgment where all men everywhere have to stand before God and give an account. The Bible teaches in uh, multiple passages 
we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Romans 14, 10, Romans 14, 12. So then each of us should give an account for the things done in the body, whether good or evil. 2 Corinthians 5, 10. We're going to be judged by the words of Christ. John 12, verse 48. And in that grand judgment scene, books are opened, and another book is opened, which is the book of life. And the, judged are, the dead are judged according to the things written therein. I'm going to be judged. My life is going to be an open book. And along with that will be the Word and the will of God. And I will one day be weighed in the balances. Don't let your life be found wanting. And then that message, you far sinner Perez, and it means this. To Daniel it meant, or to Belshazzar it meant, your kingdom has been divided and given to another. Friend, if we live like we ought to, we've got the promise that we can go to heaven and that we can live in the kingdom of God forever. That kingdom, which is the most powerful kingdom in all the world. Daniel 2, verse 44, even the gates of hell cannot prevail against it. Matthew 16, verse 18 and 19, if I remain faithful one day, if I'm in that kingdom, I'll be delivered to God. But friend, if you're in the kingdom or not in the kingdom and you don't live life right, that can be taken away from you, just like it was from Daniel. Either the opportunity or the blessing can be taken from us concerning the kingdom of God. Don't let that happen in your life and in mine. As you read those last few verses of Daniel 5, Belshazzar thinks he's going to get everything right by promoting Daniel. But in all actuality, he's already a dead man walking. He wasn't living like he ought to, and God's promises, they came fulfilled. Friend, our life is very brief. God has made the promise that He wants every one of us to live in heaven with Him for all eternity. The main lesson to learn from this deadly night feast is, I've got one opportunity. Don't squander it. Don't waste it. Don't live it in rebellion to the will of God. Instead, make use of the time and opportunity that we have to serve God, to glorify Him, and to live in such a way that when that day of weighing comes, that I'll be found right in the sight of God. Our hope and prayer for you today is that your life is being lived in such a way that it brings honor and glory to God. May each of us give our lives to the gospel of Christ and live in such a way that we want God to be seen magnified in us every day. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the Churches of Christ that reaches the whole world with the Gospel through TV, radio, and Internet. Our motto is to take the whole Gospel to the whole world. We believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious groups today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your walk. This is the Gospel of Christ. We encourage you to visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study material, well as audio and video copies of our lessons. If you would like to have a copy of today's lesson, please visit our website and fill out a media request form. Or you can email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com. Call us toll free at 1-855-458-3905. Or write to us at P.O. Box 788, McMinnville, Tennessee, 37111. This is the Gospel of Christ.